Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game, and I'm also excited to tell you about the War of the Ring 2024 World Tournament. Signups are open at the time of this video, right now, and for the next few days. It closes on February 21st, 2024, and it's open to everybody. It's totally a free tournament, and everybody is welcome to enter. The only requirement is that you've played at least one game using the Java client, and if anybody needs help with that, just join the Discord server. There are lots of people available to help. So last year we had 168 players worldwide. I hope that we'll have even more this year, but either way, it should be a lot of fun. And you, it's a single elimination tournament this year, but uh, matches are best of three games. So at the very least, you'll play two games and possibly quite, quite a few more than that. So... Without further ado, I want to jump into this game. This is a game, whenever I play games I that I like, I leave uh, a note to myself in my logs, and obviously I haven't been coming out with videos that, that frequently, but this has been in my to-do list for quite some time. This is a game from 15 months ago, back in November 2022. I played this against uh, Jason, who is a top player. Uh, Jason is really a top player. He's quite good. And this shows that even top players, including myself, uh, can make can make mistakes. So you'll see how it goes. And I I played it a long time ago. I have some memory of it. We'll see. So Jason allocated zero eyes, and you can see these rolls. This is a decent roll for for both players. I have one action token as free people, and. What I will say is I don't have any playable cards. So I have I have Spirit of Mordor and Grey Company. Neither of those are playable, which is a little sad with two Palantirs. Jason, Pits of Mordor is perfectly useful in the beginning of the game. Lidless Eye, not as useful. All right, so think about what you would consider doing as free people or as shadow. And feel free to pause the video if you want to think about it. But I think this opening turn is relatively straightforward. Let's jump in. All right, so Jason starts by mustering Isengard to war and then musters Sauron to war, and I'm just passing. And then he draws a strategy card, and I think that's the right choice because he only has one playable strategy card right now, So you might as well, and he has two Palantirs, so you might as well draw one, see what you get. Gets monsters roused. I start by drawing a card, and I draw a strategy card, and this is great. I'm really happy to see Aomer. It's a playable strategy card. I'm going to get to get more units into Rohan and then redraw. That's perfectly good draw. Jason plays Pit to Mordor and musters in Dol Golder, in Minus Morgul, and Mount Gundabad. All right, pretty standard choices. And then I start by moving the Fellowship. Oh, I should have I should have noted uh, he wrote, he wrote, he rolled no eyes. So he allocated none and rolled none. I'm going to get two free movements. I could consider giving him a ring and if, and maybe I will, I don't know. Aomer is now playable with this Palantir. Had I drawn something that was not playable, I suspect I would have used a ring. And now I'm not sure if I'm going to use a ring or not. So Jason is starting a march towards the dew line with this reinforced army from Dol Guldur into Eastern Mirkwood, and then from Baradur into Gorg Gorgoroth. I'm mm, interesting. So because I have scouts in hand, I use this Will of the West to move armies. And that's really interesting because that was a guaranteed free movement. But I guess my thinking is I want to make it hard on him to, to take due. And because I have scouts, it's worth getting in the way. And because he has two army movements, this will, or at least one army movement, this muster is going to be used for Saruman, but one army movement, it actually does cost him half, half a movement. So he gets Saruman and then I play Aomer. So I could have moved three times safely and instead I move only once. I'm definitely putting some effort towards military defense. I don't know if that's right. Looking at this now, a will of the West against zero eyes to get one extra regular into Woodland Realm and cost him half a movement? I don't know. Maybe. 
So I uh, muster into Westamnet so that in the future, if I need to use a character die, I can use a character die to go into Helm's Deep. I redrew Immerhill of Dol Amroth. That's a per perfectly good card. And then Jason attacks into Old Forest Road. And uh, of course, I play Scouts, which was my whole plan. Why I bothered to do that. And now the North is active. So one of the challenges with this scenario is that if Jason attacks or moves a regular into Carrick, then he can attack into Dale. And um, yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know if that's worth it. So I draw Kindred of Glorfindel and uh, Gwahir. Uh, and Jason just drew Corsairs of Umbar. Obviously, that's quite bad for me. I do have Imrahil, so maybe that'll help a little bit. But he has to allocate one eye. He allocates one and rolls none. So when you're going for a military, uh, early military assault, obviously, and with a slow fellowship, obviously it's great to be rolling such few eyes. And I get a reasonable roll. This is this is pretty balanced. I have some options. So he, I by passing right away, I allow him to move a regular round to Carrick, and then put the North only one away from war. And then by attacking into Dale, he can fully. Uh, basically take over the north. And I don't know, maybe my first action should have been to muster once the north so that if he attacked Carrick, I could muster in Dale. And if he attacks Dale, I could muster in Carrick. But the mustering in Carrick is just pretty useless. I think he would just end up attacking Dale and then I would muster in Carrick, but that's not that great. All right, so he's getting armies in place. He musters the South Rounds and Easterlings toward war. And I go ahead and move once because I'm definitely going to move once. He misses me. That's fair. And now the South Rounds and Easterlings are at war. I obviously don't like to see that on turn two. This Will of the West, even if I manage to kill off Gandalf, I might not be able to bring him back right away. So he attacks into Dale. He's going to put the North to war, allowing him to get the Witch King on turn two and be rolling nine dice to my four next turn, most likely. All right, I don't have a card to play. I'm just hoping, please don't roll a six, and he rolls sixes. So I got one hit back, but now the North is at war. Maybe this is weak enough that it can't just take over Woodland Realm. I don't know. I move my regular from Iron Hills into Erebor. I don't know. That feels a little premature, but the South Rounds and Easterlings are at war, so it's not going to be too hard for him to reinforce this army. All right, I go ahead and move Westamnet to Helm's Deep, so that army is now shored up. And then he thinks he gets the Witch King first. I give him a ring now, hoping to kill off Gandalf. All right, so now I give him a ring. He does hit me, so it's a one-third chance. You know, and I'm moving into... It's my third movement, so if he gets a zero which is possible, not super likely, but if he hits me and gets a zero, I can declare into Moria and get another chance to kill off Gandalf. So I really do want to kill off Gandalf here while I have the Will of the West, and so that's why I spend the ring, and maybe that's why I didn't, I didn't muster early in the turn, because I foresaw that I, needed to, I would need to use an army muster to move Iron Hills into Erebor, and I might need to use a ring to try and kill off Gandalf. I don't know. Only a one-third chance of killing Gandalf? I guess it's not It's not bad. All right, so he gets a one, and, you know, a three would be perfect, but not getting revealed with, with one, you know, is fine. I'm just, I'm happy to kill off Gandalf as long as he doesn't have Day Without Dawn, uh, which is relatively low probability, then, uh, then I'm happy to get Gandalf turn two. All right, so he gets uh, Corsairs ready. He gets a nice army in Minas Morgul ready. And uh, I'm happy to get Gandalf avoiding Day Without Dawn. And he, interesting, he's moving armies. So he's not playing Corsairs because he's not really in a rush to put Gondor to war. He would rather, he would rather get Minas Tirith under siege without it mustering up a huge amount. So he's going to try and take out Gondor in one fell swoop. And I'm thinking ahead, do I want to use my token now, moving Gondor one towards war? Because if I don't, then he can attack into Osgiliath and besiege Minas Tirith before it gets mustered at all. But I save my token. 
I'm happy to see another Scouts. The red arrow is good, and negative one tile is always nice. He gets Shadows on Misty Mountain, which is useful for taking out the Elves. I haven't mustered the Elves towards war at all, and because he put the North to war, he's not in any rush to put the Elves to war, especially if he's going after Gondor. He doesn't want to give me Cairdin's ships as a reinforcement card. So he allocates an eye and rolls no more. So he is really going very well on the on the military side of things. And I do get very nice movement here. So, you know, I think we're both playing our game plans. I don't have a very flexible role, as I mentioned, but it is it is what I have. So I move and he hits me right away and he reveals me. So that's really not great. I'm getting revealed through Moria. He gets an extra tile. I'm doing okay on corruption. Let's see what he gets and now a two. So one option is take the two corruption right now. I don't think I wanna risk Strider this early in the game, but at the same time, yeah, I don't know if I take a random here. What would you do? I think uh, looking at it now, I think I would, I would just take the two corruption. I don't want to risk Strider. I do have a lot of ways of um, hiding the Fellowship right now. So maybe, you know, if I lose Strider, at least I can hide again. But all right, I take the Corruption. I think that's what I would choose. He moves Nazgul around. He's preparing to attack. He's giving up temporarily on the, on the Woodland Realm. So maybe that one regular, plus the fact that he had to spend a regular over in Carrick, Plus he took, you know, one hit in Dale. Like maybe that whittled him down enough. Now he only has seven hit points to my four. So it's a little risky. It's a little risky to go after Woodland Realm. So he's just sitting there. He's bringing this reinforcement army from Mount Gundabad into, into the battle. And he also has these uh, Southrons and Easterlings that he can use to reinforce. So he's not in a huge rush because I didn't get the elves towards war. And instead, he's focusing on Gondor. I think that's a pretty reasonable plan. All right, so I go ahead and hide the Fellowship, and he attacks into Osgiliath. So because I only rolled one muster, I didn't want to spend that die to muster Gondor towards war the normal way. I am a little surprised. Why didn't I use my token... Seeing the Witch King show up, why didn't I use my token? Uh, maybe I'm just planning on using scouts. So I think to myself, all right, I'm going to save this muster to either muster an elite into Minas Tirith if he goes for um, Dol Amroth, or I'll use it as a um, muster an elite. So I guess I'm going to... I, I see that he's trying to take both Minas Tirith and Dol Amroth, so I might as well use this muster the normal way. All right, so I do play scouts here and I retreat into Minas Tirith because I want to have that extra regular. He gets to redraw, give it to us, and I'm just going with a fellowship. He hits me again. This time he draws a three. I take a random and he gets Strider. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that's pretty unlikely, right? He, he, um, he drew a three, which caused me to take a random. And then on his first first try, he gets Strider. So obviously this is not looking great for me. And um, that's how it goes sometimes. I do at least have Gandalf starting on turn three. And I do have Imrahil of Dol Amroth. So maybe I can hold out in Gondor a bit. He plays Shadows on Misty Mountains now going after Lorien. Because he, look at these beautiful dice. He has very flexible dice. Maybe he's going to go after Rivendell. Maybe he's going to go after Lorien. I'm not sure what. All right. So um, he attacks into Minas Tirith. All right. I'm a little surprised. Why play Shadows on the Misty Mountain right now with a muster die? I guess it just it just delays things. What else is he going to do with that muster die? He feel, like Rohan is pretty well defended. So might as well play that. Okay, fair enough. All right, so he attacks into Minas Tirith. I go back into Siege. Now Gondor is at war. 
And now I get to spend my muster to muster in Dol Amroth. And my thinking is I can get one elite in there using the normal muster, and then I can play Amroth Heal of Dol Amroth to get a second um, a second elite in there. So he had to either let me get an elite into Minas Tirith or an elite into Dol Amroth. Seeing that I played scouts into Minas Tirith, I'm a little surprised he didn't just play Corsairs first because then the incremental advantage I get from from another elite in Minas Tirith is, is relatively small. I guess at that point I could start to fight a field battle with three extra hit points. So, all right. Um, I'm hoping that he's not going to... I don't actually have another die this turn to play Immerhill of Dual Amroth unless I'm going to use a ring on this character die, which I won't um, because I need to move the Fellowship. But the um, it's possible that the Corsairs could take out could take out Dual Amroth this turn, but I, I suspect he won't do that. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm probably going to be okay. Um, and then he, he uses Corsairs of Umbar, and I immediately... Um, put these guys into siege, assuming that he's attacking Dol Amroth. And then he says, Pelargir, taking all, no card. So he's declaring that he is attacking from Umbar into Pelargir, not Dol Amroth. And he is taking everyone with him. So his plan is... So I, I take I take Dol Amroth out of siege because Corsairs of Umbar does allow you to go for Pilar gear. Um, if you want to, you can go to move one shadow army from Umbar to a Gondor coastal region. So you can attack Pilar gear. And in this situation, normally you wouldn't do, want to do that because it puts uh, Gondor to war and it gives uh, the free people time to react to this attack and muster, muster, muster in Dol Amroth. But he looks and he sees, I already have all all that I um, can muster in Dol Amroth. So, and I, and I don't, I, like, I, don't, I only have one die and I need to use that to move the fellowship. So, um, so basically by attacking into Pilar gear with everybody, he is going to be able to take over all of Gondor very efficiently. So, um, so I think that makes sense. You know, maybe it makes sense to leave one guy behind in Umbar, but he's not really worried about the military victory. So, all right. So he takes everybody and I'm like, that's really weird. I didn't expect that. And I think about, I think about playing, um, no, there's no card that I can play. I just, I would love to not get hit here. I'll be able to do shenanigans. So he misses me, which is fair. You know, he, he only hits on a six. It's not the best odds is relatively close to 50 50 a little in his favor but all right so now what do i do now so he has um i hit him back so this this is like some uber gondorian like way to go person in polar gear uh you see a giant army coming on boats you fight them and then where do i retreat so i have a chance to i have a chance to retreat I retreat to West Herondor because he's already declared that he's taking everybody. And so now I can just walk into Umbar. Now, the problem with that is that it cost me my second Elven Ring. And I mean, and then he's going to be able to go into Dol Amroth. So one of my options was to go to Lamadon, go to Lothranach, just to slow him down so they wouldn't be able to use both of these army movements very efficiently. But you know how I said I was going to use that character die to move the fellowship? Instead, I think that uh, I am going to use another ring, use it as an army movement, and then I get one regular and one leader into Helm's Deep. So Helm's Deep is well defended. And I've just taken on bar. So um, Jason notes, I say, I don't know what's best here. Jason says it's tough. If it helps, I knew you could retreat there and use a ring to take it, and I still let you. So... Um, he, he foresaw this, he knew this was a possibility, but he just wasn't concerned about it because, um, it's just, it cost me a ring and it slows down the fellowship. So, uh, I, I think that it's probably reasonable. Um, 
especially because it leaves him free to just just completely stomp on Gondor. So this, by the way, this situation is exactly why I like the base game a little more than um, the Lords of Middle-earth expansion because in the Lords of Middle-earth expansion, doing something like this allows Shadow to get another die. They can get the Mouth of Sauron in in this version. And so I don't I don't love that. I like that Shadow has to take some risks. And if you're going to take a risk like this and just give up a stronghold, like it would have cost him a single regular in Umbar to be able to defend against this. Um, you know, or or like, yeah, it just it would have been trivially easy for Shadow to defend against this. And the fact that they don't, and then they get quote punished for this, um, you know, I, this may or may not take any effort for him to deal with, but in Lords of uh, Middle Earth, you get a minion out of it too. So um, anyway, I, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with this balance of the game in the base game. I like that balance. All right. Anyway, so I spend my ring. I take on bar. Who knows what's going to come of it? I think to myself, look, Dol Golders open. Like Minus Morgul is open. I don't know how I'm ever getting over to Minus Morgul, but you know, it's open. Maybe elves are nowhere close to war. So obviously that is, um, that's an issue, but, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. So he then beautifully takes over Gondor. He sends this full army, uh, from Pelargar to Lamadon and then a single regular from Minas Tirith to, uh, Lasarnach to take that over. And then I'm just, I have no dice left. So he takes over, um, he besieges Dol Amroth. He's probably feeling pretty happy about that. And then he musters an elite into Moria. So this is a pretty powerful army and, um, you know, he's built it up quite nicely. So it's looking pretty good for shadow right now. Um, I draw, I get rid of gray company because Strider's dead. And, uh, I declare the fellowship out from under that Nazgul. He allocates one eye and I'm just hoping for him to roll a bazillion eyes, right? His military is just steaming ahead he has rolled no eyes i think he's rolled literally zero eyes this game let's just double check that um yes he has rolled zero eyes he's minus five on eyes right now and um i have a pretty balanced roll this is acceptable um two movement is you know you'd expect about two and a half so that's fair um what am i starting with oh right i'm starting with corsairs of our um Imrahil of Dol Amroth, because while I don't want him to put a Nazgul or an army on, uh, or Nazgul, he can't get an army on, on Parth Celebrant right away, but I don't want him to play something like um, Green Wraiths are Abroad or Black Captain Commands and take out um, Dol Amroth. I want to reinforce it while I can. So I played Imrahil of Dol Amroth, and now at least I'm like, okay, maybe Dol Amroth will hold, maybe Minas Tirith will hold a little bit. Um, it might take him a little while. Maybe he'll stop rolling zero eyes and I'll be able to make some progress with the fellowship even though it's slow. So then he plays Isildur's Bane, which is beautiful because um, all of these tiles, these four re uh, reveal tiles are going to slow me down. I, it allows me, like it actually will reduce my movement. When Strider is the guide, revealing the fellowship costs a die, but you can often use a non-movement die to hide and, and then you still, the free people can still end up moving, but this is actually slowing the fellowship down. All right. So I got lucky there. He pulled an eye. It wasn't horrible odds about the, you know, the same odds to pull an eye as it was to reveal me, but still, um, a little bit bad luck for him. Um, still, I'd say the hunt is probably going in his favor, but you know, you can stay in it. So, um, I move the fellowship. I'm safe this time. He attacks into Minas Tirith. Desperate battle. I have nothing productive to play against him, though I guess I could have played advantageous position. I'm not sure why I didn't play advantageous position there. I guess my thinking is he's going to move. What? Why? Uh, I'm surprised I didn't play one of those. I feel like those would have been a good card to play. Maybe I think he's going to take out Minas Tirith, move to Dol Amroth, and I really want Dol Amroth to hold. So I'm just saving the cards for there. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. All right. So um, because of the desperate battle, I get three hits. He gets three hits against me. 
and he does not press. Yep. I move the fellowship and he misses me again. That's fair. He only hit me on one third. He attacks Minas Tirith again. I don't play a card again. And he gets two hits to my one. He presses this time, doesn't play a card, gets his six, and I get one hit. So, yeah, that's pretty expected. He played a bunch of cards. I didn't play any cards. He won the battle with three to two dice. Yeah. And, and this is the benefit of basically getting Gondor under control. This is a relatively weak army, but there's I can't there's nowhere for me to muster. So he's in he's in good shape and he's playing Gondor really well. Um he took advantage of that turn where I just didn't have very many musters and he had a bunch of attacks and just got Gondor under control. All right, so he's mustering more elites into Moria. So this is just a gigantic that's a 12 hit point army. Looking really good. I don't know where he's going to go. He moves towards Dimmeraldale and south to East Rune. So he's reinforcing this army in Dale. He's going to take out Gondor. He's going to take out Lorien. Uh, he drew... He, he His password was Balrog. Yeah, so he doesn't have Balrog in hand. But either way, he's taking out Lorien. He's taking out either Woodland Realm or Erebor with this army. And he's taking out Gondor, and that's 10. And I'm nowhere, plus Dale. And I'm just nowhere close with the Fellowship. Um, all right, so I start mustering elves towards war. I do this because he's clearly on the way to attack the elves. I need to be able to defend something up here. And I can threaten Cairdon's ships. So... I don't know. Maybe it would be better to muster up Rohan to threaten Path of the Woses, uh, to maybe go after Dol Guldur. I don't know. Um, but I figure it looks like he's trying to take over Lorien and Woodland Realm. That's my sense of it. So might as well muster elves towards war. And, um, and in fact, I can start because I have muster die, muster die, and this token, I can get them straight to war this turn. So if he doesn't besiege Lorien with this army this turn, at the start of next turn, I could muster into Lorien. So, and it threatens, it, do, it does threaten Corsairs of Umbar to be able to further defend Dol Amroth. All right. So, and also, by the way, Umbar. I could defend Umbar. I, I don't know that that's relevant, but okay. Um, he attacks into Lorien, seeing exactly what's going to happen. Um, and now the elves are one away from war. I go ahead and use Oh, interesting. So I didn't use my I didn't use my token. I'm a little surprised by that because if I had used my token to muster them, then I could actually get an extra elite into Woodland Realm. Really quite surprised not using the token. What am I doing? Okay. So I saved Swords and Ariador to cycle it with a muster to draw new because I'm okay so there are two cards in the deck that will help Lorien um power too great and Celeborn's Galadrian I have two chances to draw it I can possibly draw it right now I could possibly draw it at the start of next turn so not great odds I'm surprised I'm not just mustering once and then getting an elite into Woodland Realm before this East Rune army comes in. Yeah, I don't know about this play. All right, so whatever, I played it. King Brandsman, not so useful. And he uses... Oh, I see. Okay, so he had a ring. That that's... All right, so maybe I played this correctly. He had a ring, and he's attacking Woodland Realm from Dale. So had I, had I mustered last action with the with the token he would have attacked he would have attacked into woodland realm so this way i preserve my token had he not attacked just now using the ring into woodland realm then i could have used the token after all of his dice were done and then at the start of next round mustered into woodland realm but he's playing really well and um that's that so he's fine to leave dale open because the dwarves are nowhere close to war and uh, 
what can I do? So I said, I should have, uh, I, I, I guess I misplayed that some. I sh should have mustered elves earlier so I could have gotten it, gotten one elite in. But I don't know. It's a, He said, was it possible with your dice? I don't know that it was possible. Uh, and I say, maybe not. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I made really any mistakes there. I think that was okay. He gets Cruel Weather. He gets Nazgul Search. I mean, this is just going to be horrible for the Fellowship. Um, I'm assuming he discards Threats and Promises. I have Guards of the Citadel a little late. Dead Men of Dunharrow not so useful. I'm, maybe Gwahir goes away, but Gwahir can be useful to get Gandalf in, maybe saving something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Dead Men of Dunharrow goes away. He gets rid of Threats and Promises. All right, I get I get rid of Guards of the Citadel. Yeah, I don't know how useful that charge is. Okay, so I did not draw either of the cards that help Lorien. I don't have the card that helps Woodland Realm. Okay, so he finally rolls... Um, a bunch of eyes. So in general, I would prefer him to be rolling more eyes. I can move the fellowship a little more slowly and I can use my musters productively, maybe to try and shore up my defenses. Now it's probably a little too late because he managed to get both these elven strongholds under siege. Uh, let's see what I roll. So, okay, this is a pretty flexible roll, um, but I didn't get a lot of palantirs. So if I had Palantirs, I might be able to draw into things that help, but it's just, it's not looking great. If I move the Fellowship, he's going to be able to use, oh, did I not declare the Fellowship? Wow. Okay, so I could have declared the Fellowship, but I didn't. I don't know what I was thinking. This is going to allow him to use this Palantir to do a Nazgul search, re repositioning the Witch King. So generally you want to declare. I, I, I guess I was waiting because I wanted to send hobbits up north. Well, I don't know. All right. So now I'm mustering. What am I doing? Okay. So do you know what I'm doing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is This is hard to figure out. Okay, so I'm mustering dwarves to war. Okay, so maybe I see that that these guys are going to come in. I want to get the dwarves to war so I can retake Dale so that I can play King Brand's men. That would be pretty fun. Well, I don't know. Okay, he plays Nazgul Search. Sure, because I didn't declare the fellowship. Wow. All right, so he moves Nazgul around. He, uh, he put two Nazgul into near Harad and then he moves other Nazgul what what is going on all right so the witch king <laughs> is showing up in Parth Celebrant to harass the fellowship directly though note this is not <laughs> uh lords of uh middle earth so this is um just a normal reroll and he has five Nazgul in near Harad. All right. So, I don't know. This is a very interesting situation. Do you know what's going on? Do you see what's happening? So he, he, okay, he puts one in East Rune. And, um, and then he says he's done. All right, so Nazgul Search reveals me into Western Edmund Wheel. Okay, now that's the end of that. So what's going on here? My intuition is he has... Um, dreadful spells. And he does. All right. That's the only thing that makes sense, right? So dreadful spells is going to take out Umbar without a battle. He does not have to move here and attack. And because he rolled no musters and because last round he spent his ring, he doesn't actually have any rings now. And he's played Pits of Mordor. So, and he's played um, the one that lets him move into... Um, Recruit Shadows on Misty Mountains. 
So there are orcs multi. He does have orcs multiplying again as a muster and dole golder, but but otherwise he does have two open strongholds right here. So maybe he's thinking, okay, he's clearly not going to win the game this turn. So I do have five dice and one ring. So I could possibly march from um, Rivendell towards Moria. This army in Lorien could deal with it pretty well. I'm not sure that he's super worried about it, but I guess his thinking is, look, I'm going to take care of Umbar. And then, and then who cares if he takes Moria? That's that. Um, now, one thing I'm looking at here that I could have considered is because he doesn't have any musters, and it seems like he really wants to take out this Umbar guy, I could possibly attack from Umbar to near Harad. And it does not look like currently he could... It, let's say we trade. Let's say I get a five or a six and he, he kills me. Um, he, Umbar is still mine. It's empty, but it's mine. I managed to kill off four Nazgul. And, um, and now he doesn't have a way of recapturing Umbar this round. So that's pretty interesting. I don't think that I considered that during the game. I mean, what I really wanted to have was Cairden Chips. Because if I have Cairden Chips, I can play it on Umbar. And then what can he do? Like this guy is nowhere close to taking out two elites and a regular. All right. Anyway, um, I say maybe you won't roll a five. So I know it's coming, but I'm not doing anything about it. I play Kindred of Glorfindel because I'm trying to cycle cards. I would There are a bunch of cards that could help me. Power to Great could be useful. Celeborn's Galadrim. Um, Thrandos Archers. All of those would be useful. So I'm cycling. Um, I draw Book of Mazarbul. Not so useful because Gandalf is not near enough to the dwarves, but I could get him there in two actions. So maybe worth considering. So he plays Dreadful Spells, attacks Umbar, and does get a five. So Umbar is now, it's technically still mine, but it's completely empty. So, okay. Um, all right, so we talk about it. I say, you know, it would have been a pain if I could have kept it. He says, pretty risky. I say, pretty risky place. It's which part letting me get Umbar. I didn't think it was worth using a ring and losing a movement. I could get it back later. So it was okay with me. All right, so he lets, he's like, all right, yes, it was a calculated risk. Maybe I was going to roll a six. Maybe you have to spend a ring to take it. So I'm happy to take it back later. And that's what happened. So, so all right. Um, all right. <laughs> so uh, I said, but you could have easily not gotten it back if I had curtains. And he said, yes. But sometimes you take risks in, that ga in this game. Perhaps it was wrong. So he's acknowledging it was a calculated risk. And I think I think that shows his level of play because um, absolutely you have to take risks in this game. And um, it was, I think, a perfectly reasonable, perfectly reasonable approach. All right. So, um, all right. So I go ahead and hide the fellowship. I want to maybe make some progress. And then he uses army movement now to consolidate this army from North Rune um, to East Rune. And, um, you know, you might think, well, he could have just taken Umbar, right? With that, like these guys, this guy from near Harad, um, could take it, but... Why bother, I guess? It doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Because he can he can walk in there whenever. Like I can't I can't play Kirden ships if there's no if if there are no units there. So he can walk in whenever he wants, and therefore he wants to get this army to Woodland Realm as soon as possible. Alright. So um did you see this problem? <laughs> um, so this is the power of um, this is the power of going for military attacks, and it's the power of 
um, the tokens. Because if I did not have a token this round, there's no way that this could have happened. But because of the fact that he's down to two dice now, and because he did not retake Umbar with that army die, and because he used that army die to consolidate this army, I was able to do this move. So maybe you see it now. I think for a second, and I instead use my Will of the West, I don't think it matters. I think for a while and okay, whatever. I, it doesn't matter if I use the Will of the West or not. Um, I save my Will of the West. And now he says, whoops, I threw the game away. So this is turn five. And because he does not have any muster dice, because he does not have any rings, because he does not have army dice, and because of the positioning of his Nazgul, he is in this crazy situation of, um, and we discussed it a little bit, but we'll, we'll play it out so you can see what happens. Um, he takes over Umbar using uh, these Nazgul. So now I'm down to zero. But he only has one character die left. And so um, I just walk the north, this northern unit from Etten Moors into Mount Graham, this elven elite from Trollshaws into Holland. And he puts a bunch of Nazgul in Moria and in Mount Gundabad using this last character die. And then um, I walk in. So I got four victory points on this round, um, walking into... Uh, Mount Gundabad and walking into Moria. So I think that's an incredibly hard thing to see from the beginning of this round. Did you think at the beginning of this round, you know, free people is going to be taking over Mount Gundabad and Moria? And um, I wanted to show this game because I, it's really not obvious where Jason went wrong. Like you, you can see, yeah, there was that one turn when he used the army die to, you know, to merge up when he should have be, been able to foresee this threat, but that's a really hard threat to see. So, um, I think, you know, was it a mistake to let me have on bar? No, not really. He was able to take it, but you know, this was a weird role. If his role had been even weirder, then maybe he wouldn't have been able to take Umbar. Um, and if I had had Kyrdan's ships, he wouldn't have been able to take Umbar. So, you know, anyway, that is the game. Um, I will show you the statistics. So he only, the only turn that he rolled eyes was turn five. Uh, this was the three eyes that he rolled. And it allowed me to... Um, you know, get kind of lucky, I would say, but it worked out. It worked out in the end. Um, hope you'd enjoy the game. I hope you enjoyed that game. Uh, obviously, it took me a little while to go through all those turns, but there's there there are a lot of complexities there. And um, friendly reminder to join the the world tournament. So uh, if you watch this soon, then please join. If you watch this after the tournament has already started and you missed it. Uh, deadline is February 21 to sign up. I'm sorry if you missed it, but there is a league that we run that you can join anytime, basically. And um, there are tons of pickup games that you can really play anytime. So join the Discord server, get the Java client, check it out. And uh, links are in the description of the video. So hope to see you there. Have a good rest of the day.